So this is what I made today. How are you liking that new lighting? Okay, back where we were. Giant Plate Sphere Part 2. Well, okay. It's not exactly Part 2. I didn't exactly get very far in it yesterday. The general concept in making a plate sphere starts with taking each plate, cheapo paper plate, and forming it into a hexagon, something like this. The plates are then held together with just simple staples on these nice little convenient flappy bits. Now the reason we started with plates is because they're really cheap circles. They're, they're really just easy to get a hold of, a great starting place for a project like this, and we need a lot of them for really cheap. When it's done, it'll look something about like this. Okay, you can kind of get an idea that's gonna take a lot of work. Uh, I started with one of the pentagons because it, it made the most sense to get started there instead of trying to figure out where to sneak one in later. Because if you start with a hexagon, you just kind of get a flat sheet that doesn't bend and, and you're just kind of stuck. Okay, so you can see how I folded these. So there would be this nice little flap that we can then just staple together. The reason this works is because these hexagons are what's known as inscribed in the circle. Now, the other option is circumscribed, but the hexagon would be larger than the circle you're starting with. It works really well in geometry, but for making something like this, we didn't really have but one choice. And these little overhangs actually proved to be pretty useful in this project. So when I did this on my paper plate, I used a fine pencil so that I could get a really accurate finished product, but you can't really see them very well. You can turn a circle of any size, unknown or known, into a regular polygon with the correct geometric construction. And the one for a hexagon is actually relatively easy. So let's get started. This basically requires no measuring and is really easy if you know just a little bit of geometry. We're going to start with a large circle of unknown diameter, much like the plates that we already have. So assuming that that's just what we're given, we don't have a center point or anything like that, where do we go from here? Find the center. And that's actually a little bit easier than it sounds. So you can start by setting your compass at any radius, it doesn't really matter. You draw little arcs that intersect the outside. So this is based on the idea that any chord that you draw across a circle, if you perpendicularly bisect, meaning you split it in half with another line perfectly at right angles, it will then also intersect the middle of the circle. And you can prove this with a lot of geometry, but that's beyond the scope of this video. All right, we'll do that one. If you draw a line connecting the two points of intersection, they will always pass through the middle so long as you've done it right. Now that is the geometric center of this circle. So now that we know the center, we're going to say use this. Okay, so here's our construction circle. This outside circle represents the plate. We start by just making a little mark. All right, there we go. If they match up at the top, you know you've done it right. We line up the middle of our circle, the mark that we've made, and then we put a mark on the outside circle here. And the last one goes here. It's really fat Sharpies, but I needed you to be able to see it. Draw a straight line between these points where they intersect the arc. And there you go. That is a regular hexagon from a circle of an unknown radius and diameter. And that is the same method that we used on our plate. Now, if we had to do this method on every single plate we had, that would be way too time consuming. So I took this one and I cut the ends off to make a template. And then I started folding ones around this template. But it was kind of difficult because the paper was relatively soft and it just it made a mess. So I've got a better idea. So I took our paper template and I taped it down onto some of this hardboard material. 
This stuff's really easy to cut out, and if you watch my channel, you'll probably see a lot of it. I really love this stuff. It, it's cheap, it's relatively sturdy, and it doesn't have a grain like wood, so when you're building something, it's relatively the same strength in all directions. And this will make a folding pattern for us so that we can just lay this down on top of a plate, hold it together, bend the corners, and we're not having to do our measuring every time, or use some kind of flimsy, floppy, pointless paper template. there we have it. A nice regular hexagon and with a little bit of sanding we can bring up the lines to straight and the edges to clean. I made this quick little sanding paddle. I just took more of this cardboard and glued down some sandpaper. This stuff's really nice and flat from the factory so it makes really nice crisp edges when you use it as a sanding paddle like this. I'm gonna finish the rest of this up off camera. So what I've discovered works best is using the template to squash the plate flat and then sliding a C-clamp over top of it to just give it a little bit to hold it in place while we fold all of our corners. In case I haven't convinced you that this stuff is the most versatile material known to man just yet, I made a little tool to help me crisp these edges up so that I can save a little bit of time and not wear out my fingers. And there you go, there's the first one done. That is a lot faster than using a rubbish paper template or trying to measure every one out. I'm probably gonna need like a hundred. 99. Oh, last one, this giant pile is all the ones I had to make. So in the end, our plate hexagons turned out really well. It took a little while, but it wasn't much more than about an hour to get them all folded up. I could fold them in groups of three pretty easily. And three staples is about all you're really gonna need. And that does plenty well enough for what we're doing. We're not doing this for NASA. Well, there's the first group of five completed. A good staple remover would have been a really good idea here. So I finally finished all 12 of the five plate groups and this is what it looks like. The next thing we need is some effective strategy for lacing these all together. Because this thing is going to be a sphere which means all the staples will be on the inside. So I thought these would be pretty difficult to put together correctly. But as you can see, they're actually pretty hard to not put together correctly. With these pieces being rotationally symmetric, there's not really a way to put this in here that's wrong. Once you get to this point, it's pretty easy to understand the construction of the rest of the dome. It's really starting to take shape. So here we are about seven groups in. What do you think so far? It looks a little bit like something out of a sci-fi movie. I'm trying to get the top of this thing put on, and as you can see, the whole thing is starting to take shape, but now it's become extremely cumbersome to try to work on. All right, so here we are. We are ready to put on the last group of five. I'm, I'm literally like two minutes away from being done with what I'm working on. It's a giant sphere-ish. All right, here it is. All 60 plates. The coolest thing about this is that this thing weighs basically nothing. Now that I have it done, all of me just wants to throw it over the balcony. Okay, this thing is so cool. It is sort of a sphere. It is tiled correctly. Look inside. It actually worked out a lot better than I was expecting. And that's what I made today. Do I look like a pretty flower yet?